Hello everyone, welcome to All I Math TV. Here we have a system of a Hesic equation. Here, the highest power of the variable here is 6. In other words, we have to solve for 6 good quantity or roots that will satisfy this equation. At first, when I look at this question, I ask myself, well, what could these numbers be? 6 numbers, different numbers that were added together, their summation will give us 0. But in this challenge, we're going to solve for all the six roots to this challenge. All right. So if you're new to this channel, this is All I Must TV. And as you all know, my name is Jake's Anemo. Without much waste of time, we're going straight to today's challenge. But before then, if you're new here, subscribe and turn on the bell notification button. Because here we drop amazing videos all the time for your learning, for your fun. All right. So we take our solution. So we take solution. Solution to our challenge, we have y to the power of 6 plus y to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 3 plus y equal to 0. Now, if you look at this, you discover that y is common to everything here. So, we can factor out y from this. So, if we factor out y, we're going to have this to be y bracket. y into y to the power of 6 will give us y to the power of 5 plus here we have y to the power of 3 plus you have y to the power of 2 plus you are left with 1 equal to 0. Now look at this. We are having this multiplying everything here. So we can apply the zero product rule here. We say that if you have a dot b equal to 0, this implies a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. All right, so what we do here, we equate this to zero, we equate this to zero. So doing that, your y equal to zero. So we'll go to the first root to our Hesic equation. So we have your y1 is equal to zero. Then we have or your y to the power of five plus y to the power of three plus y to the power of two plus one is equal to zero. So we don't have issue with this. So we've gotten the first value to our y here. So if we put in zero into everything here, that will give us zero. Correct. Now let's solve this other side of the equation. Okay, a fifth degree equation. So now we have our y. We have y to the power of five plus y to the power of three plus y to the power of two plus one equal to zero. Now we don't want to use trial by error method here. Okay? Although we can use trial by error method to get the first root from here. But look at what I just observed from here. A very nice expression is playing out here. What is that expression? Here we are having y to the power of 2 plus 1. And here, if we decide to put this in bracket and factor out y to the power of 3, we are going to come up with y to the power of 2 plus 1 also. And so, instead of using the trial by error method, let's quickly put this in bracket. Let's put this in bracket. Also, put this in bracket. So, let's factor your y to the power of 3 from here. If we do that, we're going to have here y to the power of 3 bracket. If we use y to the power of 3 to divide this, we are left with y to the power of 2 plus, here yeah, we are left with 1, close bracket, plus, what is common to this here is 1. There, bracket, we are left with y to the power of 2 plus, here, yeah, 1 equal to 0. Good. You now discover what we have in the bracket here and what we have in this bracket, they are the same. So we quickly take 1 from here and add the terms that are outside. All right, so let's erase this and continue on this side of the board. So, all right, so we take this to give us here your y to the power of two plus one, close bracket, this, this outside. So we have your y to the power of three plus one, equal to zero. Again, we apply the zero product rule where we equate this to zero, equate this to zero. So we now have this to be y to the power of two plus one equal to zero or y to the power of three plus one equal to zero. So all we need to do here is to send this to this side to give us here y to the power of two is equal to minus one. 
Okay? Then, if we're having y to the power of 2 equal to minus 1, taking the square root of both sides, okay, this, this will leave. And immediately we introduce plus minus here. So we are now having y equal to your plus minus the square root of minus 1. Now remember, the square root of minus 1 is equal to iota. You remember that? Okay, we know that um, your square root of minus 1, okay, is equal to your iota. So if we have this there, we cannot say here our y is equal to your plus minus your iota. Easy. So we've gotten two roots from here now. So we have your y2 and y3 from here. So let's rule this off again. Okay, we take this second equation, which is your y to the power of 3 plus your 1 equal to 0. Again, we have to get three roots from here. So what we do, if I decide to put 3 here, it has not changed anything. So the essence of putting 3 here is to uh, derive an algebraic identity, okay, which says x to the power of 3, then plugs your y to the power of 3, this is equal to um, your x plus y plus bracket, bracket, your x squared minus your xy plus y squared. You remember this identity? So we can apply that identity here. Oh, sorry, at least 3 here. Okay, so applying the difference of 2 square, this will now give us here y plus 1, okay, equal to 0 or your y to the power of 2, power of 2, minus y plus 1 equal to 0. All right, so from here we have y is equal to minus 1. So we've gotten another root to our equation so y is equal to minus one so this is your y four so we have two more roots to make it six according to our equation so let's continue on this side again so let's solve this last equation now which is our y to the power of two then minus y plus y equal to zero. Now this is a quadratic equation. So let's solve this quadratically using the quadratic formula. Or can we use for transition method? No. So using the quadratic formula, we have y is equal to your minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All right? All over 2a. So what is our a? a is equal to the coefficient of your y square and b is equal to the coefficient of y which is minus one and c is equal to the constant term c sorry one so if we substitute we're going to have y is equal to your minus one sorry minus bracket minus one close bracket plus minus the square root of minus one all squared minus your four times your a is 1, the times your c is also 1. All right. Everything all over 2 times so on. So we have our y is equal to your 1 plus minus the square root of 1 minus 4 all over your 2. Again, we now have this to be 1 plus minus the square root of minus 3. Okay? Then all over your 2. Now, we can split our minus 3 into minus 1 times 3. Is that also good? So, if we do that, we recall that the square root of minus 1 is equal to iota. So, we can rewrite this expression as equal to, you will now have 1 plus minus your uh, square root of 3i all over your 2. So we have two roots from here. 
which is automatically y because here we have y4 already so we have y5 and y6 so in all let's bring out the sixth root to this our hesic equation our y1 is equal to zero then y2 y2 is equal to your plus i then y3 is equal to your minus iota then y4 y4 is equal to minus one then y5 y5 is equal to um your one all over two then plus one all over two into root three i and the last one which is y6 is equal to one all over two minus one all over two then into your root three iota all right wow all right so this man the end to this challenge if you learn something from this challenge give the video a thumbs up and if you observe any error in the process of um solving this uh drop it in the comment section we are good at replying to our comments all right and remember this is jake's anemo and i love you so much and every one of us at online mass tv loves you because you are the reason for this channel bye for now